200 parts per million of nitrogen will read different as an EC than 200 parts per million of potassium because they have a different electroconductivity. Uh, when you're reading parts per million on a meter, it's a combination of all the salts together that you're reading. Uh, so is nitrogen a salt? Everything that, yeah, almost all fertilizers are salts. Okay. A salt is a metal and a non-metal, technically a metal and a non-metal that have combined. So um, nitrogen, um, which uh, uh, calcium nitrate, calcium is the metal, potassium is the metal, nitrate is the non-metal, um, potassium sulfate is a salt, sodium chloride, uh, sodium is the metal, chloride Got is it. the non-metal. And so most all nutrients are a type of salt. Um, and it's where, where people will get into difficulty if they use something like urea or, or um, ammonia because you can mix urea in water and not get a reading because it's not a salt. There's no electric, electroconductivity in the urea. It's simply a double ammonia molecule. Right. And ammonia is the same way. It doesn't read. Um, if, you, if you're using those elements, you have to be careful that you're understanding how much you have. But the other end of it is, is that if you're growing in a, a situation where it's cold, the um, bacteria that break down urea work at a lower temperature than the um, bacteria that break down ammonia. And so what you can end up with, urea being broke down into ammonia, and just sitting there, and then you get ammonia toxicity. And if the temperature is warm enough, it just naturally converts into nitrogen from the ammonia. And if someone's using their EC reader, they won't even know that this is an issue. Yes, okay. that's right. Yeah, EC or parts per million, because they are the same. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're reading the same type of uh, information. When you're sort of mixing together your nutrients and you're measuring PPM, which, EC, is, which, is, which is. is a derivative yeah. of EC. Um, what, are, what are you looking for and like, what do different levels tell you? Yeah. If when you're looking at EC, it's basically just telling you a level of nutrients that are there. Um, when, when, you're, when you're feeding, uh, the more nutrients there that are present, generally the easier the plant has um, finding them and using them. This is up to a point, of course, because everybody knows it gets too high, you start burning roots because the salts will then start pulling water out of the root and the roots die. Um, and I say it's, it's, it's kind of true because what's more important actually than the level of nutrients is actually the balance of nutrients. How much nitrogen there is to potassium compared to phosphorus, compared to calcium, compared to iron, magnesium, manganese, all the different nutrients that are there. The more balanced it is, it's like eating a balanced diet yourself. The more balanced it is, the healthier you are, the better you feel, um, the more you can do what you're supposed to do. If you're overloaded in, in fats, um, you, might, you might grow, um, but carry too much weight, which will not allow you to do many things that you that you want to do. Uh, if you um, not don't have enough fats, of course, then you don't have enough energy because pretty much you need fat in your diet to get enough energy if you're exercising strenuously or just working hard. Um, so it works that way with plants too. The more balanced what you have, nutrient for your plants, the better off you are. That's part of why I don't like parts per million, because everybody thinks yeah, parts per million is, is telling you what you have for nutrients, and it doesn't. It just tells you what the level of salts are. And if it were all sea salt, um, you would have almost nothing that was good for the plant in there, but it would still read parts per million of, say, 1,200.
Right. So, so the reader is give you a rough estimate of, of the EC of all the elements in aggregate, not like here's the EC of, of this yes. element or that yeah. element. Yeah. And, and that's a good point. EC is no better for reading whether they're good or not. It simply is a measurement of a relative level of nutrient or salts in your solution. So then it comes to a having a level of trust that the nutrient supplier is telling you exactly what he's giving you. Right, because if you can trust that, then you can sort of, you can work backwards to figure out what's going on, yeah. right? Yes. You have to remember also that in your nutrient solutions, mostly what they talk about is N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Uh, but as important of all as in all of those, um, some of them will tell you calcium, and that's terribly important, but iron, copper, boron, um, all it, it seldom are mentioned in there, but more than likely they have those elements in the feed. Um, you just they just don't tell you what it is. Right. So then if you do trust what they say on the packaging, then what are you looking for? Because we, we talked about having like too hot, a solution too weak like what yep. what do you sort of want to fine-tune at and why a lot of it depends on how you as a grower are growing uh, temperature um, how big a root area you have if you've got a 25 gallon pot or if you've got a three gallon pot um, it all kind of depends then on how much you're watering um, if, if you want to water very regular, you can get by with a smaller pot. Um, like a three gallon pot, you may, in good hot weather, you may want to be watering, you know, six, eight, ten times a day. Smaller doses, but more often. It gives you a, a fresh shot of water, also a fresh shot of nutrients. So you keep a, a relative balance of nutrients throughout the whole day. Whereas if you are watering, say, once a day or every other day, you may start in the morning very high, and it just gradually gets lower through the day. Uh, and then the and, next and, and the plant's going to suck up different nutrients and different proportions based yeah. on what it needs and wants. Yes, and you could actually potentially, from one day to another, um, run short on one of the nutrients. And that's why it, it, complete, you know, reintroducing a complete shot or a complete balance is, is quite important. Now, I think we missed out. I missed. I went on a tangent there from where the off question. Off of EC. Yeah, off of EC. Um, it, it's kind of like, what do you want to feed at? And and um, if you're watering quite regular, you can feed at a higher EC because between the first, the one water to the next, you don't lose so much of the moisture, the water. And EC is an electrical conductivity, which is a measure of the concentration of salts. So in your growing media, if you've got, um, just for, for a, a number to pick, we've got uh, 500 grams of fertilizer in there, and it's completely saturated, the EC is going to be at a certain level. I don't know exactly what it is, but at a certain level. Um, as that pot dries out, the plant is using water, taking water out of there, or water is evaporating out the top, the EC is just going to climb because it's a concentration of the salts in your media. And as, as the weight of the media gets lighter because it's losing water, the EC is going to ramp up. But what would bring the EC, what would, maybe not in the same uh, scope, but wouldn't the plant, suck, the plant sucking up nutrients also lower EC a little bit, but not as quickly as the yeah. drying's raising it? Yeah, it tends to use more water, and also you lose, do lose some water from evaporation in the, um, from the media. So it, you tend to, the plant tends to use more water. You also never have the, the nutrients in exact balance. So there's certain elements that are going to gradually be climbing uh, depending on the the stage of growth or the time of day or what's going on uh, with the way the plant is growing. So you gradually always be building some nutrients, maybe diminishing some others. But in general, as, as the time from water to water goes, the EC within your, your uh, growing media is going to go up because there is less moisture in there. Got it.
So the other thing this thing reads is pH levels. So what what are we what's the relevance of pH levels to healthy, happy plant growth? Specifically cannabis because yeah. <laughs> yeah. different plants have different pH uh, needs likings. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, you're familiar with a lot of citrus fruits and, and camellias and that really like a low pH around four or three, five or something. Uh, most plants like a pH, say five, 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 six to six something, six, four. And then there's some, some plants that like it higher than that. Um, most of the time, it's a result of where the plant originated from, originated from, because the the, the plant has developed uh, to survive in a certain environment, and so its genetics gives it a certain pH range that it likes. Mostly related to how nutrients are available to it. Um, pH, oftentimes, if you've got a high pH, uh, calcium becomes more available. If you have a low pH, you start to get low availability of calcium. Um, Iron and and um, most of your sulfated micronutrients. Uh, all the time, uh, say 20 years ago, they used to push an EC of um, or pH of say 6.572 or something like that. It is because a lot of the sulfated micronutrients are more available at those pHs. As we've gotten into more chelated micronutrients. The, we have gradually been working with a bit lower and a bit lower, so now we start to get below six to mid five to mid six as a pH where many of the pH or the uh, micronutrients are available to the plant. So keeping your pH in in a uh, certain level is oftentimes important to the availability of the nutrients around it. But so a specific pH level allows nutrients to sort of make themselves bioavailable in different uh, yeah. rates? Yeah, yeah. More available, less available. You can look in, in the um, uh, online or in, a, in a, an encyclopedia or something like that. They'll have a chart that shows which nutrients are available most at what, what pHs. And if you take a, somewhere down the middle where almost everything is available pretty close to the most, there's one or two of them that actually for kind of outside of that line. Uh, I don't, right offhand, I don't remember what they are. Um, but there's a couple of them that, if you could run a lower pH, it would actually be better for that nutrient, but it isn't for any of the others. So when a, working backwards, when a nutrient supplier creates nutrients, they need you to live within a certain pH range because they're formulating yes. to a specific range yeah. so that they yeah. know, oh, we need more of this because that isn't yeah. as bioavailable at that range. Yeah, yeah. And, and we as growers... Just gradually acclimatize to, that, acclimatize to that because we notice our plants are growing better at this pH, and so we just kind of gradually push ourselves to the pH uh, of the nutrient that we're buying because it seems to work better. And so uh, you, you'll hear lots of growers talk about us. Oh, I like a pH of um, around six, or a little above six, or below six. But really, most of the time, you're going to find them in that five five to six five, somewhere in between there. Um, and they've they found a spot, and it may have to do with their water, because the water that you're using is going to affect the pH. Um, what kind of uh, what kind of an acid you're using for pH pH down up and down, because they will react quicker or slower, um, changing the pH of what you have and making the the, the nutrients more available less available.